Hey everybody, Ken Newhouse here from .com Dentist, and I'm gonna welcome you to the video training I'll be doing with you today, where I'll be covering the seven elements that every high converting dentist website should have. If you're like me, and if you're like my most successful clients and members, you want your practice website to be a consistent source of new patients and a consistent profit generator for your practice. Now, before I get started with today's training, I wanna actually share a quick story with you about one of our clients, and in fact, actually decided to do today's training as a result of the horrible experience that David had gone through, David's the client, so that hopefully you can avoid falling into the same trap that David did and hopefully so that you can end up with a high converting, profit generating website just like David. Now, David and his dad, here's the backstory on David. David's dad had been a dentist for a long time. I'm thinking like 25 to 30 years when David graduated from dental school and went into practice with his dad. And David actually had practiced with his dad for about 13 years when this whole story started to unfold. They were actually doing very, very well for themselves. But the challenge for David was that he lived in a different town from where the practice was located. He was actually driving 31 miles to his office and depending on the day, could actually take him upwards of an hour to get there. Same thing on the drive home. So obviously this was a source of frustration for him. So he talked it over with his dad. They came to the conclusion that David was gonna open his own standalone clinic and he wanted to open a clinic that was in the town where he lived. So after some searching, he actually found a dentist, an older dentist who was gonna retire in the same town where he lived that was approximately four miles from where he lived. It was on the other side of town, but it was right next to the university in a very, very upscale part of town. So instead of driving 30 miles to work each way, 31 miles exactly, right? Spending upwards of an hour each way in the car, depending on the day and depending on the traffic, now he was going to be able to drive to his office in a matter of minutes, less than four miles away. So things were looking up. So after buying this practice, and like I said, this was a small practice. It wasn't seeing all that many patients in the footprint of the office. The practice itself was actually probably one of the smallest offices I've ever been in. I think it was about 850 square feet total. It had two operatories. And actually one of those was being used by the hygienist pretty much all the time. But the potential for growth in this new location was enormous. And like I said, while he wasn't seeing a lot of patients when he took the practice over, David actually started working in that office. I think it was like three days a week. And then he'd spend about a day or a day and a half at the other location with his dad, right? Still had to keep some revenue coming in. So what did David do? He started investing heavily in updating that office. That office, like I said, was the office of an older retiring dentist. So you can imagine, it was, I wouldn't say that it was moldy or mildewy, but you know how an older dentist's office can be if it hasn't been updated in a very, <laughs> in a very long time. And so that's what he did. He invested a lot of money in making that little spot very nice, very sweet, got some really nice office furniture, bought some artwork, bought a nice sound system for the office. He actually, like I said, spent quite a bit of money on this. So he spent all this money on updating the office. And from there, he started investing heavily in trying to do advertisements to generate new patient traffic into his office. First thing he did, spent thousands of dollars on a direct mail campaign, spent money on radio ads, and then he ran ads in the newspaper. He spent over $10,000 in the first couple of months, right? In addition to that, to make matters worse, his practice never had a website. So what did he do? He actually paid a company. This is a company that probably a third of all dentists are using, not just dentists, but medical doctors use. All kinds of different doctors use this company, and we'll get to that in a minute because it's really a horrific story and one you might be familiar with. So he spent a lot of money, and when I get to the point later in the story in the actual training, you're going to hear how much that was. It might shock you. Hopefully it's not happening to you as well. Got all this stuff, things are looking up, and then the bottom drops out. Suddenly and without warning, his dad dies of a heart attack, right? And in the midst of all this chaos, all this confusion, talks it over with his mom. His mom's elderly at this point, obviously. He and his mom made the decision to sell the practice that his dad has built and worked in for over 40 years. Very emotional, very upsetting but he really felt like everything was in front of him in the new location, right? So the practice ended up selling for a decent amount of money. The problem was is that his dad actually was the quote unquote, the owner of the practice. So his mom got about two thirds of the money. But in light of this, his share was still, you know, he still got a decent amount of money and he and his wife had always wanted to buy a house in the upscale part of town right next to the university. It had been their dream. Everything in spite of losing his dad seemed to be working out for him. So he and his wife started shopping around. They ended up finding a house in the neighborhood that was right down the street from the university. And even more importantly, it was less than a mile away from his new location. Now they ended up paying a lot for this house. In fact, they paid more for this house than he told me that he had ever imagined that he would pay for a house. 
And he did that because he just knew that his new practice was going to pick up soon and it was going to start to get busy. But that didn't happen. And over the course of the next year, he spent more and more and more money trying to promote that practice unsuccessfully while his production got lower and lower and lower. So all those advertisements, all those radio spots, all that direct mail, right? None of that was working in this area like it had actually worked for his dad and their other practice. All the things that his dad had taught him about how to promote and market his practice were simply not working in this new location in a town that was much more upscale from the town where the other practice had been. And that's right about the time where he found me. Actually, he found my podcast. The other podcast that I have is called Get Clients Now. He found me in Dentaltown. And after actually listening to my show for about four, maybe five weeks, might even been six weeks, David told me that he really liked what he heard. And so he sent me an email. And so after reading his email, we ended up on a video conference call. I really enjoyed my conversation with him enough so to recommend that he actually apply to be one of our clients. And so after he completed the application process, we decided to accept him as a new client. And that's when I ended up making my first trip to his office in Tulsa. And that's where I'm going to leave the story off for now, because I'm going to pick it back up as we go through this training so that I can tie in the events that happened to David with the things that I'm recommending and the examples that I'm going to show you from existing websites so it all simply works together and you'll be able to take all this information, put it into play, and it'll just work for you. All right, so if you're ready, let's roll. Okay, let's go ahead and begin the training on the seven elements every high converting dentist website should have. Now, if you're like most successful dentists, you expect your dental website to consistently generate new patients. Number two, you expect the patients your website produces to be high quality fee for service cash patients. Number three, and most importantly, your website should be a reliable source of profit for your practice. And if you can't say that about your practice website, it turns out that you're not alone. In fact, according to the dental economics article I read from August of 2016, over not, listen to this, <laughs> over 90% of dentists believe that their practice websites are not producing a consistent flow of new patients for them and for their practice. And more importantly, they don't believe that their website is a profit generator. Listen, everybody knows that your website is supposed to be one of your most reliable sources of new patients, which means that you should be able to count on your website as a reliable and consistent source of profit for your practice. Let me say that again. You should be able to rely on your website. You should be able to count on your website as a reliable and consistent source of profit for your practice, right? But the facts are quite clear. The facts are simple. Unless your website ranks above the fold on page number one of Google in the search results for common keywords like dentist or cosmetic dentist or restorative dentist or Invisalign dentist, things like that, right? Unless your website ranks above the fold on page one of Google search in the marketplace that you're serving, or unless you're using pay traffic sources like Facebook pay-per-click, or maybe you're using Google AdWords to drive traffic to your website, and unless you're like that one in a thousand dentist who's either a massive content producer, or you've written a best-selling book on dentistry, and I'm talking about a book that prospective patients are going to go crazy to get their hands on, your website isn't going to be found by prospective new patients looking for the right dentist when they're ready to spend money or when they're starting that search. They have an idea of what they want, or they have an idea of a problem that they have. They're not sure exactly what to do, but they know they're supposed to see a dentist. If you're not in one of those categories, you're not going to be found by the people with money who are looking for you who want to have this work done. And if your website can't be found by prospective patients, it's actually no different than not having a website at all. And if that's the situation you're in, it is highly likely, it is almost certain that you're losing huge numbers of new patients and massive amounts of revenue each and every month. And so if you don't find yourself in one of those categories I just outlined, and chances are you don't, everybody knows that there's a pretty good chance that your website isn't generating new patients for you. And more importantly, you know, it's likely that your website has never produced a single high value fee for service, i.e. cash new patient for you. Now, as I just mentioned, number one, approximately 90% of dentists in practice today are not happy with their practice website. And number two, they believe that their website is functioning as an expense and not as an asset. And lastly, number three, they believe that their practice websites are not a consistent profit generator for their practice. But what about the other 10% of dentists in that study? Are their websites producing high value new patients for them? Are the websites generating a consistent return on investment? Not exactly. So of that remaining 10%, 70% of those dentists have websites that are literally breaking even. That's it. They're not losing money. They're not making money which means that they're generating enough new patient traffic to at least pay for themselves, 
But when you get right down to it, that is totally lame. Certainly having a website that's not losing money. Think about that as a criteria. Yeah, I've got a great website. It's not losing money. How silly is that? How ridiculous is that? And so having a website that's not losing money is certainly better than one that's actually losing money month in and month out. But think about this. Your website should be one of your best sources of new patients. And while actually having a website that simply breaks even is certainly not as bad as having a website that's simply burning up your finances, you want to remember that you're in practice. I've said this over and over again. You're in practice to make a profit on purpose. So having a website that's breaking even is still not acceptable. Listen, everybody knows that your website is supposed to be a dependable asset that generates new patients and profit for your practice consistently dependably, and most importantly, continually. And when your website doesn't do that, it's literally burning your hard-earned money month after month after month. So as I told you at the outset of today's training, David paid a well-known company to build and host a website for his new practice. And as you know, I concluded the initial part of his story at the point of my first visit to his practice. And so one of the first things I checked when I got to his office was his practice website. And after talking with him, after talking with his staff, Turns out that his website hadn't produced, listen to this, had not produced a single new patient or as much as a phone call for the entire year since he had actually paid to have it built. Now, check this out. This is a website he had paid $3,000 for the setup fee, and he was paying $917 a month for hosting, right? A hosting fee that did not include uploading new videos. They actually charged extra for that. A hosting fee, $917 a month, a hosting fee that did not include uploading images, certainly they charged extra for that. And a hosting fee of $917 a month that did not include uploading content, specifically copy in the form of blog posts or pages. And if he wanted any of those things done, guess what? They wanted him to pay for it. They were gonna charge him for it and they were gonna charge him extra. And when I did a Google search for dentist, cosmetic dentist, general dentist, restorative dentist, or find a dentist near me the first day I came to his office, his practice website, listen to this, didn't show up anywhere on pages one through five in Google search results for any of those keywords. Not one of them, not a single relevant keyword did his website rank for in pages one through five. Now, as you can imagine, this was a major, major disaster. And as far as prospective new patients searching online went, this meant that his website did not exist. Listen to me. If you have the best dentist website anyone's ever built anywhere in the world, it's won all the awards, it's voted by the people in the know about dentist websites to be literally the world's best dentist website ever known to mankind, but it can't be found on Google, it's like not having a website at all, right? If the website for your dental practice doesn't show up on page number one in Google, this is a fact, 90% of prospective new patients will never find it or find you. It's because they don't look past page one. 90% of the traffic goes to people on page one. 80% of the traffic on page one goes to the person in the top spot. So having a website that doesn't show up in the first five pages of Google is the same as not having a website as all as I just mentioned. Check that. It's actually worse than that. It's like paying someone to build this asset for your business, for your practice, only to find out that they've been stealing your money because they never built your website in the first place. So David's website didn't show up anywhere in the first five pages of Google in any of the keyword searches that I did. And to make matters worse, the contract he signed, listen to this, this is just maddening. The contract that he signed for his dentist website locked him into a three-year non-cancelable contract. That means he's still paying for it now. And by the time his contract expires, David will have wasted a minimum of $35,200 on a website that will never produce, listen to me, never produce a single new patient for his practice. And to make matters worse, that doesn't factor in the cost of lost opportunity. Just think about that. Can you imagine that? All that much money spent on a website that will never produce, not even a single phone call. No one will ever know it's there unless they actually type in your name and search specifically for that site. They will never find you. Unfortunately, this is an all too common occurrence that results with dentists and their websites. And as I mentioned at the outset of this video, approximately 37 to 40% of the dentists that have a website for their dental practice use the same company that David did use for that initial website. And when you consider the fact that so many companies are delivering these same kind of lame results for you, it's totally easy to understand why so many dentists believe that a website for their practice would be nothing more than a big money suck. 
a big black hole that swallows up your hard-earned cash, resulting in nothing but an empty bank balance to show for it. Now, even though I've pointed these things out to you, this video is not about criticizing companies that are screwing dentists over. In fact, this video is about the fact that you can transform your dental practice. Check this out. It's true, right? It's exciting. It's awesome. You can transform your dental practice website into a new patient generating machine, and you can do it easier than you think. I'm not talking about a website that generates the nickel and dime insurance, or worse, emergency extraction Medicaid patients. I'm talking about transforming your website so that it can consistently attract high value, fee for service, specifically cash new patients, and then get them into your schedule and into your chair. And thankfully, there are a lot of dentists who have invested in and are enjoying the benefits of a high converting website for their practice right now. Remember the 3% of dentists who have websites that aren't losing money and doing better than break even? Those dentists have websites that attract, educate, and compel their perfect prospects to call their office and schedule an appointment. And these high converting websites aren't simply producing those nickel and dime insurance patients, as I mentioned. They're producing high value fee for service, specifically cash, cosmetic, and restorative new patients, which is what we all want. And they're doing that consistently and reliably and after 14 years of intensive research, and after thousands of hours involved in creating dental marketing campaigns for my clients and for my own businesses, and after having invested literally hundreds of thousands of dollars in testing what works, and just as importantly, what doesn't work, I have discovered seven elements that all high converting dentist websites are using to consistently generate high value fee for service new patients for the dentists who own them. And today I'm gonna to cover each of the seven elements explaining how and why they work and why it makes sense for you to have them on your practice website. But before I do that, let me quickly mention that if you don't have a high converting website for your practice, or if you have a lame website that doesn't generate a lot of new patients and a literal ton of profit for you and your practice, you're potentially losing hundreds of thousands of dollars each and every year and you're running the risk of becoming irrelevant in your marketplace in the very near future. Let me explain. Everybody knows how dramatically the internet changed everything from new patient acquisition to reputation management to attracting the perfect members to your team. Your dentist website plays a crucial role in your ability to be profitable and remain relevant, and I think you'd agree with that. Without a high converting website, it will become increasingly difficult to attract high value new patients that every dentist wants. Why is that? because more and more dentists in your marketplace are gonna have websites that convert, they're gonna be found online, and more and more people, when they search for a new dentist, they're looking online and they're using mobile devices to do it. So in the near future, if you can't be found when someone's doing a search, you're not gonna be found. And the days of depending and relying on a practice that's you know, supported by like lots and lots of referrals or just walk-ins or people knowing about you or whatever, those days are soon gonna be gone. Because the way people look for dentists, the way people look for any service-based business, the way people look for any products, look at Amazon and how it's destroying small business. The fact is everything is going to be based online. So you have to have a solid, clear presence with a clear message online. And without that, you're gonna be in serious, serious trouble in the very near future. And if that happens, chances are good that you're gonna be forced to live off the nickel and dime insurance patients you can get. But even those, even those patients are gonna be eventually too difficult to attract if you don't have a dominant presence online. Listen, a high converting website is one of the best investments you can make in the future success and profitability of your practice. I'm gonna say that one more time. A high converting website is one of the best investments you can make in the future success and profitability of your practice. Let me say one thing before I go any further. I'm not selling websites on this training. I'm not gonna offer anything for sale, in fact. There's nothing for sale in this video training today. I'm simply giving you the formula, the blueprint, for how to transform your website into a high converting website that generates high value, fee for service, cash, new patients for you and for your practice. Okay, so if you're ready, let's go ahead and dive in and take a closer look at what can make your website a high converting new patient generating machine. So number one, for starters, Prospective patients who are visiting your website should be able to understand what your primary service offering is in five seconds or less. And if it takes longer than five seconds for them to figure things out, you're losing new patients and the money they would bring into your practice. Let me say that again. If it takes longer than five seconds for them to really figure things out, right? If you make them work, they're going to bolt, they're going to leave, which means you're losing new patients and you're losing the money that they would bring into your practice. So it's important to consider and understand the job of a high converting dentist website, which is to consistently, I'll say it again and again and again, man, is to consistently produce high value cosmetic and restorative new patients for your practice. It's not the only kind of patients they attract, but they attract a lot of those kind of patients and they get them into your office. 
When prospective new patients land on your site's homepage, or any page on your website for that matter, do they understand your central message? Do you give them a compelling reason to keep reading? Or does your website look like every other dentist's website? Listen, if you were a leaf on a tree, and I love to use this analogy, I use this with all of our clients, I use it in our, with our membership, uh, with all of our members, I use it in my live presentations at our events. But if you're a leaf on a tree, and you're in a forest of green trees, and you actually want to be noticed, you want to be found, you want to stick out, you want to stand out, what color do you not want to be? Bingo. You don't want to be green. So if you want your website and your practice to stand out from the crowd so patients can find you, you've got to set yourself apart. Listen, over the last 14 years, I've helped dentists build high converting websites for their practices. And even more importantly, I've engaged, interacted with, and helped over 1,217 dentists clarify their marketing message, not only through my podcast, but through interactive trainings, through membership, through one-on-one -on -one working with my clients. I've worked with a lot of dentists. So now if you're ready, it's time to dive into the seven most important elements that every high converting dentist website should have, specifically that your website should have. These are seven basic elements that have been proven critically important to your website's ability to attract your perfect new patient prospects and ultimately get them into your office with a credit card in hand. So when you deploy these seven elements on your website, number one, you'll start seeing more high value new patients. Number two, your production will increase. Number three, you're gonna put more money in the bank, month in and month out, more money in the bank. And number four, best of all, you're gonna stop losing those high value new patients to your competition. All right, if you're ready, let's go ahead and take a look at element number one, which is your dentist website should include an easy to understand catchphrase on every single page on your website. You know, over the last five to six years, the primary responsibility of a dentist website has changed. In fact, it's changed dramatically from functioning as a literal warehouse of information about your practice to today becoming the cornerstone of your dental marketing strategy. This role reversal now mandates that your website be both simple to use and packed with compelling information, information your perfect prospects are looking for and they want to consume, listen to me, before they choose the right dentist. So the question now becomes, what's the marketing message of your practice? An ideal marketing message is laser focused on the services that you want to offer and what they have to do with your perfect prospects. A high converting dentist website should complement your overall marketing strategy and it should support the foundational ideas you've identified as the primary marketing message of your practice. All right, let's take a look at element number two. Your website should include an obvious call to action on every single page. You know, recently, we needed to hire someone to help build out the new recording studio we use to record the Dot Com Dentist podcast, and we also used to shoot the video for the Dot Com Dentist YouTube channel. You know, the guy we normally use, Rex, had actually just had knee surgery, so he wasn't able to help. So what do we do? We got onto Google and started shopping around. Thankfully, I was able to narrow down our search to two independent contractors. The first guy I found actually had a really nice website and the layout was just immaculate. It was really pretty, it was really nice. And I could tell that the guy paid a lot of money to have it designed and actually built. He made really awesome use of video testimonials. I talk a lot about that in our training, Social Proof. Very, very important to let your patients share with everyone their experiences. Let them do the promotional work so you don't have to. You don't ever have to do any hard selling or promotion or bragging. You let your patients do that for you. We'll get to that in just a bit. But he made great use of video testimonials, as well as an image gallery of previous jobs he'd actually done for other people, other projects that he worked on. And I really loved everything that I saw and read on his site. And I wanted to hire this guy. But there was a slight problem. Other than the Contact Us link at the top of his website, he didn't give me a clear and easy way to set up an appointment for a bid. Listen, this is really, really important. I'm no different from the perfect prospects you're targeting, meaning I'm not a patient person in these instances. And so being impatient, I left this guy's site, took a look at another guy's site. And so the lesson for you is very simple. It's this, if you want your website to become a profit generator, it's got to include an obvious call to action on every single page. Admittedly, the other guy's website wasn't as nicely laid out as the first guy's site. You know, the layout was okay, right? Let's be fair here, but it couldn't hold a candle to site number one. The initial guy's site, they weren't even comparable. But what instantly caught my attention on site number two was that right in the middle of the homepage was a clearly written catch line that said, if you want your next remodeling project to make your clients, your friends or relatives jealous, we can help you make that happen. And right next to there was a button that said, schedule a free consult and a bid. 
I clicked the button and six days later, they were processing my credit card for a down payment on the job. So what does that story have to do with your website? Everything, because in light of all the information that's available online about how to make your website a consistent profit generator, I am literally amazed at how many dentists have websites that are completely devoid of clear and concise language that asks and shows website visitors how to schedule an appointment. Other than just a blank button that says schedule an appointment, there's no instructions. There's no clear information. There's no clear message, right? All right, let's go ahead and take a look at element number three. A high converting dentist website will visually display the success prospects experience when they become your patient. Now, most dentists are good about including uh, everybody's seen a smile gallery on their website, which is actually better than having no proof elements on your site. The problem with only using a smile gallery is that images fail to capture the full extent of the transformation your patients have undergone. Let me explain. So when a prospective new patient hits your website, they're looking for elements that can show them what kind of results and what kind of outcomes they can expect from obviously being a patient of yours. Gallery images, and I'm talking specifically about the before and after images of your patients, it's a great place to start, so don't misunderstand me. Short, emotionally compelling stories work best with your gallery images. Before and after pictures tell a lot, but as an example, they don't tell the story of hearing it directly from your patient who's saying something like, listen, I had no confidence before this. My husband had just divorced me for a younger woman, okay? My confidence was shot, but after Dr. Jones worked on me, I experienced levels of confidence that I'd never known before, and as a result, I found the new love of my life, and I got the most amazing job. I'm just making something up as I go, but you get the idea. So you've got to include short, emotionally compelling, hard-hitting stories with your gallery images. In fact, every high converting dentist website has these short, emotionally compelling stories with the gallery images. So you might be wondering, why include an emotionally compelling story with your gallery before and after images? Good question. Because emotion is what drives choice, not logic. So using short, emotionally compelling stories with your gallery before and after images is mandatory if you want to realize the full benefit of using these images. Sure, you can use the images. Pretty much everybody does. But remember, if you're in a forest of green leaves and you're a leaf on a tree, what color, if you're in a forest of green trees, do you not want to be? You do not want to be green. Use short, emotionally compelling stories with your gallery images. It'll set you apart and use something else that I'm about to give you now. The next element that all high converting dental websites include is outcome-based video testimonials of your patients. Now, as an example of what an outcome-based testimonial might sound like, it would sound something like this. I would hear a lot of uh, headaches and a lot of jaw pain, depending on you know, my, usually my stress level or whatever was happening, and then hey, I'd get some rain in my ears, and yeah, I had a lot of earaches, so my pain would always be like generating from my um, jaw, and then I would start to have um, um, not so much earaches, but yeah, I'd have ear pain, and, and I, it would bother me a lot to um, loud noises and things, and it was like having a headache that was affecting my um, just hearing and, and just the level of pain, yeah. and um, I would take a lot of uh, Motrin and ibuprofen and stuff like that, and then I, at first was like the potential of, of, of braces, but then um, the next thing was like that it would require jaw surgery to get things in place, which that was something I never wanted to do. Or it... um, since I had the bio rejuvenation, I um, just I can't believe my smile now. I love it. Um, it took me a little while to, to adjust to the difference between how my teeth were they're discolored and ground down and now they're so nice and what they used to look like when i was younger so i, I love it yeah. well, the the whole process of going through the bio rejuvenation one of the biggest things when i came in to see dr drew was that my jaw hurt a lot and i knew i was grinding my teeth and i was actually had a tooth that was loose that was a real concern because it was starting to be a real problem. So um, I, I, I didn't feel really great about my smile and I, I actually had headaches and started having ear pain from um, the way my jaw was aligned. Yeah, one of the biggest things about um, having my, my teeth done and, and um, having this like great smile, one of the things I, I feel confident with my smile, but I also feel very confident with um, 
knowing that my, my teeth are in good shape, that prior to this they were, um, you know, like crowns are breaking and my jaw was out of alignment. I had a lot of dental work ahead of me. So um, I feel so good now that um, I don't have all these worries that I have all this dental work that's gonna go forward. I, I've addressed everything at one time and I love the way it looks and I know that um, it's really the best approach so that I don't have a piecemeal, um, piecemeal dental plan. It's, it's great. I really am happy now. <laughs> That's the truth. <laughs> well, I recently moved from Dallas to Chicago and um, so I've met a lot of new people and um, there, since I've had um, all this work done in the pilot rejuvenation, um, people approach me that are much younger than me and they think that I'm their age, which would, you know, I'm 57 and I have people in their 40s and early 50s coming to me and commenting on me and flirting with me and, and um, it's very um, it's, uh, it's very flattering but it's also um, I just feel good I feel younger I feel good about myself and um, I didn't realize that I didn't realize that it was changing and um, that I was my face was aging and the teeth were making me look older and now I I feel brighter and, and feel really good about myself. Now, there's a process you have to use to get amazing outcome-based testimonials like that. And in just a bit, I'll tell you actually how to do that. All right? I'll give you the tools for doing that. I'm going to give it to you absolutely free. For starters, and this is, uh, this is something that you can't bend on, right? You have to be able to deliver transformative results for your patients. Now, assuming that you are, and I'm going to have to make that assumption. Otherwise, you probably wouldn't be watching this video. Assuming that you are, there's a simple step-by-step -step framework for getting those outcome-based video testimonials from your patients. And as I just mentioned, at the end of this video, I'm going to actually show you how to download our free PDF report, seven elements every high converting dentist website should have. And in that report, in that report, I'm going to give you the link where you can download a free video that walks you through the process. I'm going to actually give you the entire video testimonial system. Normally sell that system for $497, but when you download the report, I'm going to let you download that system as well so that you can start capturing these high quality outcome based video testimonials from your patients and start using them on your website, on YouTube, on Vimeo, on Facebook, Instagram, all over the place. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at element number four, which is to break each service. So as an example, cosmetic dentistry, restorative dentistry, biorejuvenation dentistry, general dentistry, Invisalign, et cetera, right? You wanna break each one of those services down on your dentist's website into bite-sized chunks. Now, the point of this is actually very, very simple. If you list all of your services on the homepage of your website, the people that visit your site are going to get bogged down in all that information. Human beings don't like having too many choices to pick from. And when presented with too many options to choose from, what do we do? We shut down and often end up not choosing anything. That means people are going to leave your website. Now, Robert Cialdini, PhD, he's the Regent Emeritus Professor at Arizona State University. He's the leading authority in the world on human behavior, so like why people do the things they do, right? But in his book, he describes this phenomenon, and the name of the book is Influence, Science and Practice, get the fifth edition, that's the most current edition. But in the book, Cialdini, actually, it's actually produced Cialdini, not Cialdini. Uh, he actually explains the core concept of the theory by stating that, quote, offering a lot of choices is not the best option when you want your prospect to pick one of the things that you're offering. A variety of choices, for example, can literally paralyze the user. It's actually better to create a situation where you can choose for them. Bottom line, you want to offer a variety of choices, but remember that too many choices is not always the best option. A way to get better results is to make a choice for the user by giving them, listen to me, fewer options at each stage of the process. Three, maximum four, no more. Very simple. Giving your prospects fewer choices as you move them through the decision funnel, as it's known, it's going to allow them to really engage with the services that have been put on display, okay? It's not going to cause them any kind of overwhelm whatsoever. So if you've got like a bazillion different services that you want to offer in your website, like you offer like a bazillion different things in your practice, just ask yourself these questions. Can you categorize your services into three and at the most, like I said, four choices on your site? Can you simplify what your practice offers into your dominant streams of production because when you do this, you're going to be able to create a site that doesn't overwhelm your perfect prospects. Instead, you're going to create a site that becomes irresistible and magnetic to your perfect prospects. 
All right, let's go and take a look at element number five, which is to deliver high quality content that your perfect prospects will find irresistible and magnetic and want to consume. High quality content, listen to this. High quality content is one of the hallmarks of a high converting dentist website. How many dentists don't put anything on their site other than the services? It's like a menu at a restaurant. And you wonder why nobody's finding your website, reading it and calling your office? Well, how many people are gonna read a menu at a restaurant and decide to invest in the, in the restaurant? You need to provide quality content, content they wanna consume, content that actually gives them information they're looking for, content that not only gives them information that they're looking for, but actually moves them into the direction of your office, which means it is persuasive in its approach. I didn't say cheesy, I didn't say salesy, I didn't say used car salesman, all right? You can write compelling content, right? In fact, high quality content is content that your prospects find irresistible and magnetic. So let me ask you a question. You might be getting this image in your head that, oh, Ken is telling me to create a uh, you know, copy on my website that's real salesy and high pressure. Listen to me, listen to what I just said. High quality content is content that your prospects find irresistible and magnetic. Do you think for a second, if you were writing content or putting content on your website that was real pressure-like and you know, like real car salesy, you know, used car salesman type high pressure tactics that your perfect prospects are gonna find that magnetic and irresistible? Of course not, that's not what I'm telling you. So pay very close attention to what I'm telling you. There's an art to doing this. It's actually based in science. You can create high quality content and the formula for that which I can teach you is based in science of why people do what they do. But when you produce high quality content, it's gonna keep people on your site longer. It's gonna contribute immensely to your site being ranked high in the search engines in Google. That's one of the targets that we want. We wanna get our website ranking as high as we can on the first page of Google. Listen, if you're not on the first page of Google, like I mentioned earlier, you don't exist. And in fact, I'll take it a step further. If your website doesn't exist above the fold, so like when you pull up a Google search, you scroll down below the ads. If you're not one of those first four, five, or six res search results on Google, like the free ones, you don't exist. Very few people, unless they're looking specifically for you and your name and your practice, very few people will scroll down past those first results on that Google search page on page one. And so back to our point, ultimately, high quality content is gonna play a pivotal role in getting your perfect prospects to call your office and schedule an appointment, and that's what we all want. Now, obviously, your site's design, as I already mentioned, is essential in making a good first impression on your visitors. What does that mean? Well, that means that your site must be clear and easy to navigate, but make no mistake, the content, the content on your website is what keeps prospects coming back and is what ultimately is gonna to help to convince them to call your office and schedule an appointment. It is not the pretty layout of your website no one has ever called anyone's practice because they had a pretty website. They called because of the copy. You know, if you go on Amazon and you're looking to buy a product or a book or whatever, what do you do? You don't just look at pictures. You read the information about the product or the book. And then what else do you do? You read the reviews, right? That's social proof. That's where video testimonials come in. So you can see this is prolific across the internet. The things that I'm teaching you here today, right? Let's go ahead and take a look at element number six, which is to incorporate an automated sales funnel and use quality lead generators to capture your prospects' contact information. You also wanna use marketing automation to build trust and schedule more fee-for-service cash new patients. This is huge. Think about this. An architect would never start building a home without plans or a blueprint. They'd never begin without a solid foundation and a clear path forward. If they did, what would happen? That house would never get off the ground. So answer this question. Why do so many dentists try to implement a marketing campaign and have a website built without a plan, without a sturdy foundation, without building blocks? It's likely because they just don't know where to start. With the right marketing plan, you can grow your practice with significantly less money, with less effort and less time, but you have to learn the plan. You have to have a plan. You have to implement and perfect it if you really want success, right? If you really want these high value fee for service patients calling your office, scheduling and ending up in front of you in your chair with their credit card in hand, you have got to design and implement the perfect marketing plan that you can then utilize in the building and the application on your website. The sales funnel is the foundational element of the profit generating dental marketing plan that you've been looking for. 
It is compromised of the building blocks you'll need to consistently attract those high value fee for service new patients and make your practice more profitable. It is literally the roadmap, it's the blueprint you should follow if you're trying to attract more of these high value fee for service patients and grow your practice. And once you know how to create a sales funnel, you're going to understand the plan that you can follow to create the most effective website imaginable. Sales funnel is the key. The hidden element your website and your dental marketing campaigns have needed, listen to me again, is the sales funnel. I want to hammer this home because it's that important. And with a sales funnel, you don't have to guess about how to do marketing anymore. No more trial and error and no more wasting money on marketing that simply doesn't work. Not only that, but a sales funnel works in tandem with any advertising efforts you're currently using. In fact, most if not all of the advertising dollars I spend go to support my sales funnel that then leads prospects to buy my products and services. Rather than investing, listen, I don't, try, I don't invest in advertising that sends people directly to buy products and services of mine. I put them into my sales funnel so that I can build a relationship with them and I do that on the front end, right? We're gonna get into that right now in just a second. The first two pieces of your sales funnel, which is your catch line and your website, work excellent together. They work very well together. They work synergistically together to help your perfect prospects become curious about you and your practice. And more importantly, should be the element, should be the thing that leads them into the next phase of the relationship with you, which leads to enlightenment of your prospects. Follow me on this one. In this phase of the sales funnel, you're gonna to start to offer them ways to get to know you a little more. A little bit better, right? Little baby steps, but this actually happens very, very quickly. You're gonna enlighten them on how you can solve their problems. And the main way we want you to start doing this is through what's called a lead generator. You may have also heard the term lead magnet, like the one you're watching right now. This video is a lead generator. I offered tremendous value in exchange for your email address. Very similar to what I'm asking you to do, exchange value, in exchange for their contact information. Lead generators are really the best way to invite prospects that have visited your website to the next level of relationship with you. Think about this, if you have somebody hit your website but you don't grab their contact information, chances are you're never gonna hear from them again. So lead generators are really the best way to invite prospects that have visited your website into that next level of relationship with you. So think about this, if a prospective new patient hits your website, they don't call, you don't capture their information and then they leave. Chances are you're never gonna hear from that person again. So it is critically important to get their contact information and the way you do that is with a free, valuable piece of content in the form of a lead generator. So lead generators for the most part, they're free, they're not gonna cost you anything to produce, they're digital like a PDF, right? Short video, maybe even a webinar that's gonna show your perfect prospects what you're capable of. And certainly you wanna seed any type of PDF or any type of short video or webinar with video testimonials, outcome-based video testimonials from your existing patients who are shouting your praises from the rooftops. Nothing like social proof on video. It is the cream of the crop, you gotta have it. And in exchange for these lead generators, this valuable information that your prospects are gonna download, they're gonna give you their email address, which becomes a lead, right? What are you gonna do with that? You're gonna use that to continue to enlighten them, enlightening them about your practice and your service offerings. And you're gonna do that through using automation with emails, not direct mail, not expensive postage, right? Maybe somewhere far down the road when you get really sophisticated with this, but for right now, email's free. Once you write an email, email that goes out to everybody that opts in and you have all these emails written, you don't have to touch it. It's all automated, it does all the heavy lifting for you. So offering this valuable free content is really the best way to invite your prospects that have visited your website into that next level of relationship with you. Well, Ken, I just want people to visit my website and call me directly. Listen to me very carefully. People are much more skeptical today. People have so much information they can review that the days of them hitting your website, unless it is a direct referral from a brother, sister, or a best friend or something like that, even those people are gonna look online and search you out. But if it's not one of those kind of people, people are doing their due diligence. Think about this. Would you go and just hit a website and, and if you didn't know anything about it or if you knew very little about it, would you go online, see a picture of a car and then go drop 100 grand on a car? Drop 50 grand on a car? 75 grand on a car? A boat? Anything? No, you're gonna read information about it. So ask yourself, why would any patient in the right mind hit your website 
see some information you put on there in the form of like a menu, as I mentioned earlier, like a glorified business card, pick up the phone and call you and then decide to come in and give you 75 grand for a full mouth restoration when they know nothing. They haven't checked any information out. They're not going to do that. Okay. People are smarter than that today. People will do their due diligence. Listen, they've got the power of all information at their fingertips. It's known as Google and everybody has a smartphone, at least the people that are going to be giving you money. So you've got to do this right. And you've got to be willing to offer free, valuable content to get people to give you their contact information and further that relationship with you. So as an example, if somebody opts in for your free lead generator, what are they telling you? They're telling you that they want to hear from you. But more than that, it's important to remember that valuable content is what your perfect prospects want, not what you think they want. They do not care. And if this upsets you, too bad, okay? That's not my intent. My intent is to help you. They don't care where you went to school. They don't care about your awards. They don't care about all the accolades that you have. They really don't care about you. Well, that doesn't make sense, Ken. No, they really care about what you can do for them. That's why social proof, outcome-based video testimonials is just one of the elements is so incredibly effective at getting these high value fee-for-service cash patients into your practice. Valuable content. Listen to me very carefully. I'm going to say it again. This is information that your perfect prospects want. This is not information about you. This is not information you think they want. This is information they want, which means you've got to invest the effort and the time and the money in figuring out, it's called due diligence. It's called research. Real high-end business owners and corporations and stuff do high-end research. One of the things we do in our company, we research our marketplace. So you got to put some effort into this. You can't just slap stuff up. So when your perfect prospects are signing up to get information about the services that you provide, you know, that's a process that's akin literally to courtship. Think about that. When you offer a lead generator in exchange for their email address, you need to make sure that the lead generator delivers real exceptional value for your prospect. And here's why. Because each prospect's email address is worth about 15 to 20 bucks. So that means that prospects are going to part with their email address with about as much resistance as they would part with a $20 bill. Now think about this. Here's something else. If somebody gave you their email address, or if you, let me rephrase that. If you gave somebody your email address, or if you handed somebody a $20 bill for what you thought, what you were convinced, what you were told was a valuable piece of information, and it turned out to be nothing but a sales pitch or nothing but a glorified chest thumping session on paper or in video. How ticked off would you be? What are the chances that you're going to hire that person in the future if they just fooled you and gave you garbage for your $20 bill or for your email address? Zero, none, you're done, right? You have permanently and forever written them off and you will probably tell other people to permanently and forever write them off. If you're asking, in fact, you might just go out of your way to tell people how disappointed you were and how ridiculous their uh, free information was, right? Maybe, maybe not, I don't know. But you will certainly never hire these people. The value that you give away in your lead generator should be worth a lot, okay? Actually, like a monetary value. I'm gonna give you my video testimonial system. Sells for 500 bucks. Now, which is more important, the video testimonial system or this report? I would say the report is probably worth more money because of what I'm teaching you in a 31-page PDF with all the tools all the information that I've jammed into the report. So you've got to have a lead generator that's gonna be worth a lot of money so that prospects don't feel like they're getting ripped off when they give you their email address. I can't stress this enough. It is critically important to you being successful with this. You can be successful with this more so than you think, but you've got to give people immense value. Now, not everybody's gonna give you $20 bills and certainly not everybody's gonna give you their email address and that's okay. And I know some people are actually clueless when it comes to this process or they're delusional and they think that everybody's going to want to give their email address in exchange for this valuable piece of content. Let's just imagine for a second that you're offering just a tremendous value to people. Okay. Truly, it is an exceptional value and people would be happy. They would do backflips if they could buy this for a hundred bucks. But now you're giving it away free and all you're asking in exchange is the email address. Some people actually find it difficult to believe that every single person that gets that opportunity won't give you the email address. But think about this. If they don't trust you enough to give you their email address, what makes you think they're going to trust you enough to give you their hard-earned money and let you work on their teeth, let you work in their mouth? So the sales funnel actually acts as a filter to weed out prospects who don't fit the mold of your perfect patient. 
You don't want everybody giving you their email address because a lot of people aren't qualified to be your perfect patient. That's the only people we want to talk to. So the sales funnel has multiple jobs. One of them is to attract, magnetically attract your perfect new patient prospects. But at the same time, it's to prevent everyone else who's never going to be qualified or maybe down the road to be qualified, but for now they're not qualified. It's to prevent them from getting to you. It's to prevent them from getting into your system. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at element seven and then we're gonna wrap this up. Element seven, your dentist website should be a clear communication of your practice storyline using the .com dentist practice storyline worksheet. The practice storyline, otherwise the PSL, is a worksheet you can use to make sure that your marketing messaging is perfectly positioned and on target. In fact, most dentists have tried multiple forms of marketing and each and every time their results have been average at best. I talk to these guys and talk to these ladies every single day and they are frustrated and that's putting it nicely. It's because the results, like I said, average at best. And as a result, their marketing messaging and the communication in their case presentations, their email copy, and specifically in this case, their website messaging, which includes offers on the website, has become cluttered and confused. It's very, very confusing to your perfect prospects. The practice storyline is going to walk you through the process so you'll know exactly who you are and how to structure your website's messaging perfectly. This is a gem. This is an unbelievable resource in and of itself. So even if I didn't offer you the video testimonial system, and even if I didn't offer you the free report, seven elements that every high converting dentist website should have, even if I didn't offer that to you, if you can get your hands on the practice storyline worksheet and understand how to use it and then how to integrate that information that you obtain from a completed worksheet into your dental marketing campaigns, into every element on your website, your email, everything, communications with your patients, you would be absolutely thrilled to get it. So when you use the practice storyline worksheet, your messaging and your offers are going to be instantly irresistible and magnetic to your perfect prospects and to your existing patients. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at the nine critical features of the practice storyline and how you can create yours by answering these questions. Number one, your perfect prospects see blank as their ultimate outcome, i.e. not the external thing like, you know, a more beautiful smile, but the internal thing like to regain their confidence after their husband has divorced them for a younger woman, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, it has to be internal. Number two, the biggest external problem they're dealing with. Now, this could be that nasty set of teeth they've been walking around with, could be crooked, cracked, stained, worn, ugly teeth. This is external, not internal. Number three, Next, you want to know what their primary internal problem is that they're consumed with. As an example, what internal struggles are occurring as the result of the external struggles they face? Is their confidence damaged? Are they angry? Do they feel less secure about how they look? Et cetera, et cetera. Number four, how can your messaging be more empathetic toward your perfect prospect's primary internal problem? Number five, why are you the most qualified authority to solve your perfect prospect's problem? Number six, what is the plan and how will it solve your perfect prospect's primary external and internal problems? How will your plan help resolve your prospect's fear and confusion? Number seven, figure out your plan's direct call to action. Number eight, once you solve your prospect's biggest, most pressing problem, what does their life look like? And number nine, what does their life look like if they reject your plan? Now, this is important. You've got to show this scenario to them along with number eight, okay? What does their life look like when they follow your plan? You've got to tell them both. If you don't tell them what their life looks like if they don't do this, imagine never telling your patients what happens if they don't brush their teeth. Nobody does that. Everybody says, hey, this is what's going to happen if you don't brush your teeth. If you don't floss, you're going to have periodontal disease. You're going to lose your teeth, man. So when you're doing very high-end fee-for-service work and these patients are paying you forty, fifty thousand dollars, sixty, seventy-five, hundred thousand dollars for a full mouth or for biorejuvenation, you have got to tell them not only what their life will look like once you're done with the program, Mrs. Patient or Mr. Patient, you got to tell them what their life's going to be like if they don't follow through and take the plan. Okay, this is not a scare tactic. This is reality. So transforming your dental practice website from nothing more than an expensive online business card that isn't getting you any new patients into a profit generator is easier than you might think. The answer to these questions will provide all the material you need to create an awesome practice storyline for your website, for your email campaigns, for your case presentations, and even your philosophical approach to practicing dentistry. Now, I want to tell you about a framework that we've created that's going to help you clarify and simplify your dental marketing and your messaging so that patients can actually understand you. You know, we found that when we take our dentist clients through this blueprint, 
They're able to attract more high value new patients and their practice grows. You know, they're providing exceptional results to their patients, but the word isn't getting out. You know, I've been a direct response copywriter for over 19 years. And from the very beginning, I've been captivated by the power of story to actually move people, to get people to take the actions that you want them to take. Listen, everybody knows that stories have incredible power, power to tap into the human brain and captivate the listener. In addition to that, stories are the most effective method we know of for getting people to feel specific emotions. And as science has proven, emotion is what drives choice and gets people to spend their hard-earned money. Now, ironically, it's only been within the last four to five years that neuroscience has figured out the biology behind stories. The neurological processes in the brain that explain what makes stories one of the most powerful tools of influence on the planet. Think about it. If you're engaged in a story, whether you're reading a book, watching a movie, or listening to a friend tell you the latest gossip, the result is always the same. It is virtually impossible to pull your attention and focus away from the story. When you're engaged in a story, it's like you've been transported to another world where anything is possible. So in the process of testing different ideas and methods for growing my business and the business of my clients, I was struck by a question. And the question was this. Could I leverage the power of story and create a framework, a story-based framework for my business and the businesses of my clients and filter the marketing and the messaging through it? You know, it was just a few minutes ago that I showed you the Practice Storyline Framework Worksheet, which is an incredibly powerful tool I created as part of the seven-part Practice Storyline Framework training. You know, when I first began testing these methods, I was still in private practice. That was some years ago, but I had multiple locations at that time several associate doctors, and a boatload of employees. And I used that as sort of a laboratory to test all this stuff out. And when I applied this framework to my business, actually to each one of the clinics that I owned, something truly amazing happened. Each one of them began to experience significant and almost instantaneous growth. As an example, in the clinic where I saw my own patients, I went from roughly $50,000 a month in net revenue to an average of over $85,000 a month. That was net revenue, not gross, which was huge. And all we did was clarify our messaging using the practice storyline framework. So I'm wondering about you and the message that you're trying to get out for your practice or the messaging that you're trying to get out for that high-end cosmetic or restorative dentistry service that you're offering, a service specifically designed for high-value, fee-for-service new patients. Let me ask you a question. Do patients really understand the tremendous value that you have for them? Or do you just think they understand how dramatically you can improve their lives? But the reality of the situation is that you're accomplishing little because you're talking over their heads. To understand how the practice storyline framework can transform your practice, you need to understand how this thing called story actually works. Ingrained in every human being's DNA is the ability to communicate about what's going on in our environment, predict what's next, and improve our lives through stories. And the thing I discovered that makes the practice storyline framework so effective for growing your practice is that it's formulaic. Stories are just a system of formulas that help to clarify information. And another way to visualize this is to understand that stories work a lot like music. As an example, if you played a recording of a piece of heavy equipment, say, that's repaving the road near your house, right? They're laying down some new asphalt near your house. And along with that noise, I played also the background noise of kids playing at a local elementary school at recess. And alongside of that noise of kids playing and laughing and screaming and yelling and being giddy and having fun, we heard dogs actually barking at those kids from the neighbor's yard. And so as you listen to all that commotion, your brain would recognize it as nothing more than noise. Sounds traveling through the air that enter into your ear canal and vibrate your eardrum. That's all noise is. But if we take noise and we submit it to certain principles and rules, so to speak, certain formulas, we can create music. And when we do that, those sounds will now be recognized by your brain as music. Sounds that are assembled in an organized, functional manner. And everybody knows that there's a difference between music and noise. Let me give you an example. If you were to attend one of our live workshops, and just prior to me coming on stage, we played the sound of that construction site, the kids and the dogs that I just mentioned, right? The dogs barking. And then a week later, I ask you to tell me what you heard just prior to me walking up on stage. Chances are pretty high that you would not remember. But what about this? 
What if just prior to coming on stage, we were to play your favorite U2 song? And then a week later, you were asked, hey, you know, what song did Ken's team play prior to him taking the stage? Chances are excellent that you'd remember, hey, it was one of my favorite YouTube songs. It was awesome. They were rocking the place out. So the practice storyline framework organizes and submits your marketing messages and your communications through the rules and framework of story. And just like music, it allows your messaging to trigger emotions and specific reaction in the brain of your perfect prospect. Your messaging now lodges in their brain, and now their brain understands it. You know, when I look at a new dentist client's marketing collateral, like their website, you know, their email campaigns, their direct mail campaigns, their communication, like in their case presentations, what I see in virtually every instance is noise. I see clutter. For example, when I look at their website, they're communicating way too much stuff. They're not communicating stuff that really comes through the lens of story and so prospective patients. The prospective patients who land on their website are either getting confused or bored because the content and the messaging looks identical to that on every other dentist's website. So ask yourself this question. What would happen if you changed your marketing collateral so that instead of creating noise, you were creating music? Do you think that word would begin to spread about you and your practice? Of course it would. Now, in order to do that, as I just mentioned, you're going to want to understand how a story works. And if you're like my most successful clients and members, I know exactly what you're thinking right now. You're thinking, Ken, listen, I'm a high-end cosmetic or restorative dentist. What does this have to do with me attracting lots of high-value, fee-for-service, cash new patients, increasing my production, and growing my practice? Well, I'll get to that in just a minute. But first, I want to explain the seven-part framework that almost every story you see uses, whether it's at the movies or in a book. Almost all of them obey this framework, and it all works like this. You start with a character. It's the hero of the story, right? And then that character, the hero, has to solve a problem. The hero wants something, but they can't get it because they've got this terrible problem that they're dealing with. And the challenge is that the hero can't solve the problem by himself. He needs someone to help him. He needs someone to guide and mentor him. So another character has to come into the story, and that character is the guide. And the guide understands the hero. He's been there. He's done that. And more importantly, He's also conquered the same challenge that the hero is dealing with now. And now the guide is going to help the hero make it through. The guide also gives the hero a plan. Something simple that helps him develop a kind of philosophy or gives him something to do that's going to help him solve his problems. And then the guide calls the hero to action. And the hero is forced to make a decision to take action. Like he's got to do something and if he doesn't, there's no story. And that action can either end in a success or a tragedy a success, or a failure. So, whether the hero is a man or a woman, or whether the guide is a man or a woman, that's how story works. And every story works this way. This is Star Wars, The Matrix, all those stories, they work this way. In The Matrix, you've got Neo, and Neo has a problem. The agents who patrol The Matrix are after him, and he's wondering, man, do I have what it takes? Could I really be the one? He meets Morpheus, who's been surviving in the Matrix and has essentially figured things out. He's been fighting his own battles in the Matrix, and now he can help Neo get through this. Then Morpheus gives Neo a plan. The plan is to talk to the Oracle and trust what she tells him. The Oracle calls Neo to action, brings him into the fight against the machines. She tells him that he's got to get past the agents and destroy the machines, and that can either end really well, where the agents, especially that dastardly Agent Smith, are defeated and everybody in Zion lives, or it can end poorly, where Neo dies and the hope of Zion is lost. That's the stuff of story. Okay, but what in the world does this have to do with your brain? Well, let me show you another example. This is an example from the 2016 presidential campaign. In this example, you can see how important it is that the messaging is crystal clear and that it resonates with the majority of voters, right? So let's look at Donald Trump and his campaign against Hillary Clinton. You know, if you believe the prognosticators, Donald Trump should not have won this election. He was a billionaire slash TV megastar, but he was up against the former Secretary of State, the wife of one of the most highly rated presidents in American history, William Jefferson Clinton. But Donald Trump ran a really tight, brilliant campaign, and his story was crystal clear and accessible by people. Here's the big paradigm shift in the practice storyline framework, and this is important, so pay close attention to what I'm about to tell you. The story is never about you. It is never about your practice. 
It's not about your certifications or your training or the awards hanging on the walls of your office. The story is always about your patient. In other words, you and your practice are not the hero of the story. Your patient is the hero of the story. The Donald Trump campaign understood this completely and faithfully, and they stuck to it. They always treated the voter like they were the hero of the story. So that's the big paradigm shift. The first thing that you have to realize in the practice storyline framework is that you're not the hero. Your patient is. And one of the most important things we have to do is to define what your ideal patient wants. And the Trump campaign defined this as they wanted to reduce taxes. They wanted you to have more money in your pocket. And this is exactly what most Americans wanted. They didn't want it then, and they don't want the government now coming after them trying to take their money. So the Trump campaign brilliantly identified a critical problem that the majority of voters were dealing with, which was high taxes and big government. Empty the swamp, right? And then they positioned Donald Trump as the guy. He's Morpheus. He's Obi-Wan Kenobi. He's here to help you figure out your problems and help you develop a process to conquer the problems that you're dealing with, which is high taxes. And he's a simple guy. He's easy to understand. He owns a bunch of big buildings all over the world. He's a TV celebrity. And most people, most people really like him. And according to the prognosticators, he shouldn't have won that election. Think about Hillary. Hillary was popular, but only with a certain segment of the voters. You know, President Obama was leaving office as a very popular president with everyone on the left and pretty much kind of a lukewarm reception from everybody on the right. He had done his best to position Hillary as the person who would continue down the path he was on. And because Donald Trump didn't have any experience as a politician, Hillary should have won this election hands down. But she positioned herself as the hero. Donald Trump positioned himself as the guide. And then we had to make a choice. Of course, we're called to action. Is it going to be Donald Trump or is it going to be Hillary Clinton? Donald Trump told us, here's what's going to happen if you vote for me. You're going to have more money in your pocket and the government's not going to take all your money. And what won't happen is you won't be poor and we won't live in a socialist society and the government won't become massive if you vote for me. So there's something at stake that is a clear, cohesive narrative. Very simple, very easy to understand. People could understand what Donald Trump was about in just a few seconds. He didn't clutter the narrative. All right, by this point, I know you get it. That's how it works in story. That's how it works for The Matrix, and that's how it works for running a presidential campaign. But I understand that you're not writing a screenplay or you're not running for president. You're trying to attract high-value, fee-for-service new patients into your practice. You're trying to increase your production and trying to grow your practice. So how does this work? How is the practice storyline framework helping dentists just like you attract more high-value, fee-for-service new patients and grow their practice? And how can it do the same for you? So I've shown you now the importance of the practice storyline framework. If you filter all your messaging through this framework, which means to get rid of the clutter, get rid of the noise, make everything crystal clear so that your perfect prospects can understand you, so you can attract more of those high value fee for service new patients you want, and your practice will grow. If you're delivering exceptional results to your patients, and you know that your work is outstanding, and patients are literally raving about the results that you give them, but the word's not spreading, it's likely not spreading because you haven't talked about it in a way that patients can repeat effortlessly and effectively. You haven't given them the messaging so that it can actually go viral. When you get your messaging right, you can double, triple, even quadruple the number of high-value fee-for-service new patients you're getting right now. If you can get your messaging dialed in and make it crystal clear, it will become magnetic and irresistible to your perfect prospects and patients, and here's how you can do it. Register for our Practice Storyline Framework online training. Attend the training, go through the seven-part framework, make your messaging clear and impactful, and then use all the other tools that we have to execute your new clear and impactful message, tools for creating a powerful case presentation that can easily double your conversions, other tools that we have to execute your new clear and impactful message, tools for creating automated email campaigns, tools for converting your dentist website into a high-converting, profit-generating, new patient-producing machine. And we've got all the information you need to create a marketing revolution in your practice so you can get everything down so it's clear and succinct and compelling and patients will begin to talk about it. Take action today. Go through the practice storyline framework online training today or face the fact that nothing about your practice or your results are going to change. Register for the training now, and I'll see you on the other side. I can't wait to work with you and your team. 
Click the button and register for the Practice Storyline online training now.